Hello guys, so my name is Laws for Cupcake, also known as Cupcake or Capcake. Uh, and today I'm going to be showing you just a little bit on how to make a custom map in Payday 2. So I've been doing this for about three and a half years now. Done about ten or so maps. Possibly more because a bunch of shit posts. But <laughs> either way, i got a lot of experience. And I've had a couple people coming to me for help. And instead of individually helping each of them, I'm just going to make videos and help all everybody at once. Because didn't really see our beard lib editor uh, tutorial out there. Anyways, to start off, um, I'm just going to say you already know how to install it. I'm going to put stuff in the description on how to do that if you don't know how. But to start off, you're going to start the map, go into options. Start the map. Start the game, go into options. Go into beard lib editor menu. Alright, so there's a bunch of menus here. We're not going to focus on a lot of them. Uh, if you want to change some options, you can. The main two that we're going to focus on today is these two right here. So I'm going to show you what this menu is right here. So very obvious search bar on the top, you can search heists. Um, by default, it only shows custom heists, but you can click this and you can see all the default heists are here. So if you want to search Big Bank, right there. Um, some other things here, we can change the difficulty, um, mission filter, I don't really know, we got one down, log spawn units, uh, there for debugging, I'll get into that later, uh, check load time, just check how fast your map loads, and safe mode, I'll get into that later. Alright, so let's go to a default mask, I'm just going to show you the format, let's go back to Big Bank. So. There's two things. One, actually no, watchdogs. Watchdogs, yeah, there you go. So, I'm gonna first start off with describing how a heist works. So let's start with this watchdogs. We got watchdogs. So up here is the narrative. That is the culmination of the days. So when you click on watchdogs, you're clicking on the narrative. And then you load into the first day, which is Watch Dogs 1 truckload. Um, you continue it to the next day, you get Watch Dogs 2 boatload. Alright, so this is the narrative, and these are the two levels. So if you go through here, you can see this is the narrative, level 1, level 2. That's just to get some um, vocabulary to you, so I'm not confusing you. What we're going to do now that we know that is we're going to create our own map so we go to the projects file projects tab here there's three options so we can edit existing project clone an existing project or heist and a new project edit existing just goes into your maps folder and you can see all the maps here i can just go into late holiday special and change a bunch of things up uh, clone existing heist gives you just the default heists. Um, if you ever want to make a heist, a default heist, change the objectives, change the scenery, all that sort of stuff, you want to hit clone first. If you were to do it through this menu, it does not save. But I don't want to clone and I don't want to edit an existing heist, so I'm going to hit new project. Alright, so it's asking me for the nar name of the project. This is also asking for the narrative name. So I'm going to call it test video all right then it's asking me for a new level um, I'm gonna hit no for now because I'm gonna show a different option so project name we got the narrative right there we can go through the contacts these are all the contractors that you can have it also shows your custom ones if you have them um, there's a bunch of different options here I'm gonna go through a couple so the debrief event, it's not really important for custom maps to have this, but you can if you want. Um, you can click this and select the crime net video. You don't want to hit too many. I don't really click any, I just leave it here. That's when you buy the contract, it's there for two seconds. So most people are not going to pay attention to that. Um, we can go down here, you can change all the settings down here. But 
we'll see there's no level sadly let's add a new level test map now i'm gonna change that name tutorial map all right so we got the level here i'm gonna click it tutorial map debriefing so if you ever want to set up a briefing this will be in the loadout screen the intro event will be in the black screen the outro event will be when you're done the heist and in the success room ghost bonus is there if you want a stealth give a stealth bonus max bags uh, we got ai group type so you use this if you want to select different kind of group ai group types for like the, all the different maps um if you want the players to spawn in a specific suit then you can use this if you don't want team ai use that i'm not going to use team ai for now um not too sure what retained bags is but i'm assuming it's used for watchdogs day one to watchdogs day two so any bags that you um secure in day one go on to day two and i think that's what this is for um and then down here this is how you change the assets so i'm just going to remove all the assets hit save perfect so once we're done with this we can just click the levels and you see it's right here um, it doesn't always spawn on the top so you can always just type in tutorial and it will show up all right so let's load right on in all right so we loaded into the level and I'll be explaining what creates a level and how to spawn them so there's two things that make up a level. There's units. A unit is something like this that we physically walk on, or it can be something like this navigation stuff, which can handle how the AI walks on stuff. And then there's also elements. Elements are these little orbs you see right here, and they do the scripting and the back end for the levels. For example, this element right here is a player spawner. So this will physically spawn the player in. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't spawn in. Now you may be asking, what is an instance and what is a prefab? An instance, think of it as copy pasting a world and putting it directly into another world. So if I go into the intent instance thing, you can see stuff like a meth lab. So Overkill has a meth lab instance that they could just drag and drop right into any map. That's why a lot of the meth labs look very similar. Prefab, on the other hand, is pretty much just a direct copy-paste. It's very simple to do, and I will or show what prefab looks like. So it's just a copy-paste. This will directly put it into the level. So if I look on the select menu here, if I look, I can see these enemy dummies right here. Instances do not show up on the select unless you go into select instance so as I explained right there the select tab just lets you see everything so if I select a unit I can click on the floor and it selects this unit when you have a um, unit or an element selected it has this outline the color matches whatever color you set in the options too so mine might be orange by default it is blue so if I go to spawn a unit, let's say I want to spawn in a car. It doesn't allow me to spawn in a car. Why is that? That's because the car unit isn't actually loaded into the level. So if you go to the assets manager, there's these things called packages. Packages are overkill's ways of loading in units. Within a package is pretty much a list of all the units that the game says I will load this so if you don't have the package loaded you don't have the unit loaded so if I go to load right here if we go to unit I can now type in car the load shows every single unit within the game so I can find every single car in here and there's a lot of them some of which are not even cars, they just have carpet because I typed in car. So I want a specific car. Let's get this car right here. So once you click on the unit, it'll have this list. Some have 
multiple, some have individuals. Uh, if you choose multiple, if there is multiple, you want to choose the one that has the least amount of megabytes, unless you see Firestarter here, stage two. So this is the second level of Firestarter. If you wanted a bunch of props from that level, I'd probably advise clicking on the bigger one. But I don't, I just want the car. If you're wanting to find a specific unit, it's a lot of guess and check. So you can load in a unit, check it. If it's not what you want to do, you can always just go back to here, click on this and hit unload. This will turn red. This, if an item, if an asset here turns red, that means that the package is not physically loaded. So this item is not physically loaded. So you can always just hit remove and unload asset. Once all assets are loaded, it will say it's good. So you know that your map is good and will work. But I do want that car back. So I'm going to go get it. I'm going to get a different car this time. See, so yeah, I'm going to select the smallest one. And here's the car. Just going to click it in. And it's all cool. All right. So sometimes units have these things called a sequence manager. And they handle anything from animations to changing the color of an object and that sort of stuff. When you first load it in, that sequence manager doesn't pop up. It's supposed to be right here. So I'm just going to click save and restart quickly. There isn't much on the level, so it shouldn't take long. And it's done. So now we're going to click on it. We see this mesh variation. That is the variations in the sequence manager. And you might be looking at this like, what does all this stuff mean? And a lot of it is guess and checking. But some of them, some of Overkill's sequence managers are kind of obvious, like this one, state viz hide. So if I click it, it hides it. So if you don't want an object to pop up and it has a sequence manager with that, that's how you do that. Um, you can click on it or you can also just type it in and it will work. All right. So units have sequence managers, and that's how that works. All right, so that's enough of the units. Let's go into the elements tab. So here you can see all the different ways to manipulate the heist. There's a lot of them. It's hard to memorize all of them. And honestly, I don't even know how a lot of these work. But I'll show you something. See this AI global event. I'll click it. And you're looking at this like, what does this mean? What does wave mode mean? What does AI event mean? And what does blame mean? All this transform stuff, transform, just refers to where the position is, the rotation is, uh, quick buttons just allow you to delete, create uh, prefabs, execute it, deselect, and this is just how to handle the name and all that sort of stuff. But this part, AI global event, is specific for this element. You see here, those are the same, those are the same. How do I figure out what this stuff means? Instead of just figuring it out on yourself, a very easy way is if you go click this button right here, it'll go and open up a tab on your browser going to the Wikipedia for the Beardlib editor that goes right to that element. So if we look on the AI global event, on execution, AI global event will apply the sected rules to the match, the match being the heist. So wave mode, select the game's current assault state. So if we go into here, we can see passive, quiet, hunt, blockade, besiege, assault, and none. Truthfully, I don't know a lot of these, but it does say besiege is often used on alarm. Besiege is um, pretty much the state right after alarm happens, and assault is of course the salt. We got AI event, select the game AI event. So if we click this, we can see gangster's weapon hot, gangster's called, police weapon's hot, police called. So if I hit police called and blame. So this pretty much, when it pops up like, hey, the alarm went off, 
this is the reason for the alarm, this is what determines that. All right. So if I hit glass, it'll say uh, someone hit a glass alarm. Or if you just want to say the alarm went off, you hit empty. All right. So a lot of the times when you put down an element, they don't physically load in until you restart. So I'm going to just going to hit restart and we're going to teach you what this AI global event does once you're in game. So if we now go in game, you can go in game by default. It is F10. You'll go to here and then just on loadout screen, you can hit enter. So we're into the heist now. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but this custom song this is the stealth section of the song. It's very important to keep in mind. If we press F10, we can go back into this menu and we can look at it just like we were before, except this time our hands are there. So you don't really want to edit stuff in this stage. What you can do, though, is you can execute and test stuff. All right. So we have this AI global event. Right now, it is not going to do anything because it's not been executed. But if we want to execute it ourselves to test it, we can click this and we can tell what this does. So we click it. See the music changed. That's pretty much the game. This AI global event changed the game from a stealth heist to now it's a loud heist. And this is when the police would spawn. All right, so just as a general overview of what everything you just saw, you saw how to create a heist, how to edit, existing overkill heists and what makes up the heist itself next episode we'll be going over elements how they work how they get executed how to execute them yourself and a couple of common elements that are used within heists